What's up, Cougs? Welcome back to the second episode of season five of Coug on the Clock. I'm your host for today, Alex Dorfler, while I'm here with... I'm Monty Tenney, back for my fourth season. Yeah, you're beating me on this. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> today, we're talking WSU women's sports, uh, WSU Cougar football, NFL, MLB, finish off with some birthdays. Yeah, as so, usual. Yeah, excited. Let's get into it. Okay, so uh, starting off with WSU soccer, um, the Cougars, we were ranked 15th, now we're 25th, mm -hmm. uh, still top 25, so that's good. Not, not complaining. Com not complaining, yeah. exactly. Always good to be ranked. Uh, we're 7-1. and one. Last game we played against was Seattle U. We beat them. Uh, next game, Friday, this upcoming Friday against Stanford. Stanford's ranked number three right now. Uh, in their last 19 games, they have gone 16-0-3, so they haven't lost a game in, uh, I think it's 16 consecutive weeks. That's insane, yeah. Uh, Cougs getting a big win against Seattle U. I believe the final score was 2-1. to one. Uh, Both goals for the Cougs coming in the first half. Half of yeah, play? Yeah, yeah, the first half. The first half of play. Um, I mean, the vibes were immaculate. The Cougs were on, obviously, Seattle U, non-conference team but Cougs nonetheless able to put the game away. Mm -hmm. Stanford, uh, though, I know they have these two fast forwards. Um, so if we can contain them, I think we got a chance. But like all in all, Stanford uh, soccer is serious. I think they have a chance of becoming national champions. Definitely. Um, yeah. Newest additions to the, the ACC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, and then also WC Volleyball, Yes. Other, other women's sport going on right now. Big week for WSU Volleyball. Yeah, they are amazing right now. Last, um, Yeah, they had the that Texas road trip where they took down uh, Baylor and then number six, Texas, and they are now ranked in the top ten. Yeah, number seven. Incredible. Uh, so our next game is uh, against Apple Cup. It's against uh, UW. It's our first conference game. Uh, I think – and same with soccer, Stanford's going to be our first conference game. Uh, I think we're going to kill them. Yeah. Our it, girls are doing great. Uh, we're on a roll. We got to stay hot. And um, really, like, we're looking good. I think we got a serious chance. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So um, now going into Cougars football. I mean, Northern Colorado, I'm sorry. That was a <laughs> long thing. Yeah. I was, mean, it was an absolute – I mean – I don't think anyone expected anything less, but yeah. what WC, was the spread? You see, forty-five oh, it was and a half. Forty-five and a half point favorites. I think the final score was sixty-three to twenty-one. Sixty-four. Sixty-four to twenty-one. I mean, all, almost all the assets of this Cougar offense were looking fantastic. Cam Ward was on his game. Uh, Nakia Watson was able to get some runs, which he's been struggling a little bit this yeah, year. Uh, Cam Ward still is the leading rusher on this team. Big touchdowns. Um, pain. Payne, Dylan, right. Payne Dylan Payne got his first touchdown, which was awesome. Josh he had, Meredith. I think he had 81 yards also. I mean, incredible. He busted out a big, I think, a 53-yard run there. Um, first team was looking great. John Mateer, Johnny Football was <laughs> Is that Johnny dialed football? in. Can, can I, call him, I, call him, I call him Johnny Football. He's our Johnny I mean, Football. Let's see his personality. Hey, he's a great guy. I've gotten to, I've gotten to have some conversations with him outside okay. of athletics, but definitely yeah. put a whomping on Northern Colorado. And even Emmett Brown was able to get in the game. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a miscommunication. It was, gave up a pick uh, in the red zone. But nonetheless, Cougs advance are now ranked number 21. I think they should be ranked number 18 or 19 at least. Uh, I think we're better than Clemson. I think we're better than Colorado. I know you wanted to talk about that Colorado game, so we can get that into that. That game was just intense. No, I want to talk about, actually, uh, oh. this upcoming week, Oregon State. Yes, so the Battle of the Pac-2. Yeah, now the Pac-2, the Battle of the Pac-2. Um, soon going to be the Pac-2 Pac champions. Yeah. So. So, um, Oregon State ranked 14th. They um, have probably the best defense. They have a fantastic defense. Yeah. I think that um, as long as Cam Ward's pl like playing good, we have a chance. Really, like when he's playing good, we're good. Yeah, the only interception that the Cougs have given up this year was that uh, interception by Emmett Brown. Yeah, he hasn't in, in he garbage has town. He hasn't given up an interception. Exactly, yet. Cam Ward hasn't given up an interception this season yet, which is so good to see. Moving on, I mean, from Jaden Delora 
who was not very consistent in the red zone, threw a lot of red zone interceptions back in his time here. And even last year, Cam struggled a little bit to get the ball to his receivers, and yeah. it's been really cool to see how much he's progressed and how coachable he has been to take that exactly. step. Exactly. And, I mean, just his dual threat. Nick it's also. incredible. It's, he really fits in well with us. And, I mean, Oregon State uh, – like, I'm really excited for that game. It's going to be such a fun game. Yeah, that's going to set the tone, I think, for, like, the whole season. That's our yeah. definitely our biggest opponent. Yeah, Both teams 3-0. and oh, I mean, they, mm-hmm. have, they haven't have really played anyone like, that's true. too notable. I mean, SDSU, we thought, they didn't really have the best game against SDSU. Their offense, like, was a little slow, but, I mean, they're a defensive team. Um, yeah. Their running backs are a power duo. I mean, it's going to be a fi- it's going to be a competitive game, yeah, DJ, and I'm very uh, looking forward to it. Elay. Yeah. yeah, DJU, uh, high school teammate of WSU long snapper Simon Samarzic, <laughs> actually. I mean, I was long and, uh, snapper in high school. I mean, most <laughs> one of the most important <laughs> positions. Hey, I'm not. I'm not. I was, I'm a, lo- not, I'm I was not a locker room that. guy. The long snapper needs to be a locker room. One hundred percent. Hold the team together. One hundred percent. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that Colorado game though? Yeah, sure. Uh, that was a super intense game. Wow. Um, Colorado, I mean, S- Colorado State had the lead for most of that game. Um, yeah. I mean, I thought they were, like, I'm, I was honestly a little surprised that Colorado came back, Boulder. Yeah. But, um, I mean, Shadur Sanders, he's a beast. He's, he's yeah. a dog. I mean, actually, he's got the L, right? He's the leader. <laughs> the leader, yeah. Leader and dog. Leader and dog. Um, Travis Hunter, I mean, that sucks. Yeah, no, I mean, a, a dirty hit. Dirty Obviously, hit, yeah. The aftermath, it's terrible to hear, you know, death threats, all those kinds of things that have been leveled at the player who did injure uh, Travis Hunter. Obviously, not what you want to hear, not something you want to see. Uh, it shouldn't have taken place in the first place. But, you know, I think it was – emotions were running high in that game, a big rivalry game yeah. that Colorado Ooh. State should not have been in. And the fact that they <laughs> were in it is just – I mean, it speaks levels to – the Cougs able to put up 50, 50 on, on them. them. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, their next game, <laughs> they, they almost beat Colorado. Yeah. That's why I think Colorado. They're kind of. They're, kind they're frauds. frauds. They're frauds. Yeah. I 100% believe that. I think that their team is a good team, um, but I think they're wildly. They're young. They're young. I, young I believe team. they're wildly overhyped. I think they're completely, uh, like, overestim- yeah, under- yeah, overestimated. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm not a big fan of Colorado. No. Yeah, no, me either. I mean, last year, what, they won one game? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. I mean, how, I mean, much I can, how, Dion. how much can just a coach change a culture? Yeah, that's true. Um, Do you see how many celebrities were there? I swear, there's never <laughs> been as many celebrities at a college football it's game. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, yeah. Well, I remember, uh, what was it? It would have been 2012, 2013, uh, USC versus Oregon in Eugene. Um, the big three of the Miami Heat, LeBron, Wade, and Bosch, were all there. Okay, okay. There, it was crazy night. I grew up a Ducks fan, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, now we're not going to skip it this time. NFL. Let's do it. Um, week two. Uh, all the games were pretty close. All the games were pretty close. The, the Bills yeah. Raiders game was a blowout. It was a ten to th- thirty-eight I mean, to ten game. I. Uh, I was kind of high on the Bills, and I like that because good teams destroy bad yeah. teams. Josh Allen destroyed the Raiders. I'm not saying the Raiders are necessarily like a bad team, but like the Raiders are pretty mid, right. if not a little bit below it. But um, all the other games were all the other games were good. Yeah, I mean, Cowboys beating the Jets 30 to 10. That's a big 20 point game. But other than that, they've just been beating up on the New York <laughs> teams. They really have. <laughs> they look they're good, relentless. Though. Out of the NFC, I said it last week. Like yeah. Uh, Niners, Eagles, uh, Cowboys. Like, those are really the main teams, I think. Yeah, and, I mean, we were talking about it before the show, but the AFC is looking, I don't want to say weak, but they are wildly underperforming. The NFC is definitely the dominant co- conference this year. Yeah, I know. I 100% agree with that. Um, with the, well, I mean, the AFC, like, I think they have really good teams, but it's just like it's, they're, that's why it's I said they're, under, they're underperforming. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're underperforming. All underperforming exactly. You can have the greatest team. You could have, you know, the greatest um, salary cap budget. You can do the best you can. You can trade away all your picks. But at the end of the day, if they don't perform, you're not going to get anything out of that. They can't stay healthy. Exactly. That's another thing. And well, then among, like, like you said, we saw uh, Nick Chubb. No, you didn't say that, but we were talking yeah. about it. Nick Chubb got injured last night. He's oh, likely out. Horrible. He is he out is for out. the that rest of the season. 
really um, sad. Because um, I was thinking, I was like, yeah, he's he's always had pretty good health. Yeah, and then right before game time, Cam Akers pulled from the starting lineup for the Rams, and now we're hearing a bunch of trade rumors around there. Um, yeah. Uh, what what other in- any other injuries this week? Uh, Saquon, he yeah, Saquon. he uh, sprained his ankle. The original assessment was he's three weeks, but Dabble was saying that there's a possibility Dable. that he could be back in a oh is it Dable, uh, okay. that he could be back in a week in a week or so. So Saquon has that dog in him. I have no doubt that he can bounce back from a sprained ankle. I don't know the ankle. Thursday game. Yeah, but uh, Niners Niners Giants. It's gonna be great. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited it's, for that game. As a Niners fan, it's as a Niners be great. fan, I'm so excited for that game. Um, I know probably a lot of the people watching this, Wazoo. Uh, students and stuff, Seahawks fans. Sure. Really, uh, honestly, I think the Seahawks should have lost that game. They Detroit, got away. With a, they got away with a big hold. Yeah, th- I mean, also Detroit. Uh, that guy who did the hold, Jake Curhan, number seventy-four, actually went to my high school. Pretty cool. Uh, came to a couple of our football practice. He like played with my brother. Oh, that's was awesome. one of his O line men. Super cool. True. To see, like, I'm rooting for him. Yeah. But. Um, even though I'm a Niners fan. Right, right, right. No, but, it's, it's uh, always cool hometown. It's the same thing with me and Justin Herbert growing up in Eugene. Yeah. My brother played against him all the way from middle school to high school. Uh, it's always cool to root for your hometown heroes. But I think we should see that that was a hold. Yeah. I, I, I think that should have been called. Aiden though, Hutchinson Detroit, would have gotten to the quarterback. Detroit, they were, like, going for, uh, going for it on fourth, like, the whole game. And then when it, like, actually mattered, they were playing for the tie. Yeah. Like – Dan Campbell, I mean, he's just got to stay consistent with that. It's uh, like how it seemed like Sean McVay was playing for the spread, kicking the field goal as time expired. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, like, Brandon Staley. Mm-hmm. Like, he – last year, I remember he was going for, like, almost every fourth down, doing all these crazy things. Yeah. But, like, he was – they weren't throwing the ball deep with Herbert. They, like, uh, just – I don't know. They couldn't field goals and stuff. Just wasn't a good game. Like, yeah. Time somehow – yeah, uh, Brandon Staley. Honestly, he's <laughs> on the hot seat. That's something you that, think so. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, overtime, three and out, and then Ryan Tannehill manages to get a drive oh, and yeah. win the game. Okay, well then, who who would you think would take his spot over there, coach the, wise? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but Hugh Jackson, the enemy. He's doing great for the uh, Commanders. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're doing. That we could also Their look defense at, is really good. I mean, we can also look at the defense. 49ers pipeline. True. Obviously, we've produced some incredible coaches. Mike McDaniels. The Dolphins are looking incredible. That's yeah. a sleeper pick. You know, Niners-Dolphins in the Super Bowl, I could easily see that happening. I could see that. See, that's what I'm saying. AFC is just a toss-up. Like, it I really see, is. I could see Niners-Chiefs, Niners-Bills, niners I, I I think the general consensus is the Niners are the yeah, best team in the NFL saying, right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> um, they didn't play like that during the first half the other day, or they didn't play like that for a good ap- portion of that game against L.A., but obviously you go into your home stadium, Levi's South, and <laughs> get the dub. Yeah, dude. I saw a video. Like, it's like watching that, the game. It was, it was like the Red Sea. It's like that every year, the Niners. I mean, over yeah. the last five years, the only time the Niners have lost to the Rams, I believe, well, we was – Oh, we do, yeah. 100%. Um, George Kittle, Nick Bosa, they all own the Rams. So, but Now Purdy. And now Purdy. Damn Purdy's Anderson. looking fantastic. People were saying this is the year he has to prove himself after a phenomenal run. He's still undefeated as a starter in mm-hmm. a regular season. The only thing that took him down was a torn UCL, and he's bounced back. Yeah, he's bounced back incredibly. Like, like nothing happened. Oh, I um, love this team so much. <laughs> yeah, me too. Go Niners. Go uh, Niners. Okay, so next topic, um, MLB. Yeah. We're, so, we're, we're getting down there. Yeah, we're getting down there. <laughs> I think only – so regular season ends on the 30th. Mm-hmm. We're going to post this video on the 20th, so, like, 10 more days of baseball. Yeah. Uh, regular season. I mean, playoff baseball is awesome. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world. But um, something cool last night, uh, Orioles, they clinch a playoff spot. Cedric Mullins, their guy, a go-ahead home run in the bottom of the ni- or top of the ninth. Uh, clinch it. I think it's their first time making the playoffs since 2016, I believe. A while. But um, – yeah, Orioles, good for them. They really have turned it around. Uh, something that I'm pretty sure they've done, like I'm almost certain this is what they did. They like, over the last like four years, their last like, uh, their first, their all their high picks were, they only picked position players in the draft, like first three rounds. Cause I mean, it's harder to get 
a good position player than a pitcher. Like, you can pick up a pitcher. There are a bunch of pitchers. Totally. But, uh, yeah, so Orioles, that's pretty cool. But um, here, let me put up. I have the yeah I have the wild card standings right now. I mean in, out in the American League, Tampa Bay is running away with it. They're 92 and 59. They're nine and a half games ahead of the Blue Jays. Yeah. So it's but it's uh, Rays, Blue Jays, Rangers, Mariners, Yankees in the wild card. Uh, where did the wild card go? And then uh, for the NL, uh, uh, right now wild card: Phillies, Arizona, Cubs, and then yeah. Giants, Cincinnati, Giants, Miami, Giants are two games Giants. back. Yeah, Giants. Um, Doval's been a—he's been a little shaky lately. Yeah. Uh, but you know who's impressed me is Patrick Bailey. Patrick Bailey. Patrick yeah. Bailey is an incredible catcher. He's probably the best defensive player. I would agree. I would agree right with that. Now. I think that if he had played this entire year, there's a good chance that, or oh, and if Corbin Carroll wasn't as good as he is, he, there's a good chance he could have been NL Rookie of the yeah. Year. Uh, Eugene Emerald. <laughs> not not to brag or anything. Uh, I think he saw he has a 1.81 second pop time, yeah. which is absurd, and he can hit the ball incredibly well. Switch hitter. It's it's just he's so good at baseball. <laughs> it's so fun to watch Patrick Bailey play baseball. He's what Joey Bart should have been. Yes, well, I, but honestly, definitely. I like I like Bailey better than I like saying Patrick Bailey more than I like saying Patty Joey Bales. Bart. Yeah, Patty Bales. Joey Bart. Sorry. I mean, we saw uh, Casey Schmidt got sent down to AAA. Um, yeah, he you know, he was. He would not walk. He would swing no. at everything. Yeah. He had big strikeouts. J.D. Davis coming big. J.D. Yeah. Davis is coming in big. I Tyro like, Estrada. Uh, Estrada and Matos. Matos. Matos, Matos, Matos is Matos, doing good. He has comparisons to uh, – I see him kind of like Acuna. Even Acuna, Lamont Wade Jr. is playing Yeah, Lamont Wade solid. Jr. is in. But Acuna, mm-hmm. he's, gonna, he's running away with it yeah. uh, for uh, NL MVP. MVP. Yeah, yeah, the Braves 100%. are just – I think the Braves are going to win it all. Their pitching's like a little weak, but um, their offense is insane. They have like the most home runs than any other team. Like four of their guys have thirty plus home runs. Yeah, uh, they're awesome. The Braves. I'm honestly like Giants aren't in it, but like I'm kind of rooting for them just because. Not in it yet. Run. Not in o- it yet. Only two games back. We do have to mention. But the, I mean, the Dodgers did. The Dodgers did clinch the NL West. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah, MLB is coming down to it. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, Rays said they would. They're making a new stadium. They got to confirm. Oh That's wow! Pretty cool. Also, uh, last night, Adam Wainwright, his 200th win. That's big. Yeah, that's big. So uh, he's future Hall of Famer, I'd say. 100. percent Um. So yeah, I'd say that's basically it for uh, MLB. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So now, going into some birthdays. Let's do it. Uh. Today, the 19th. Um. Tuesday the 19th. One I got for baseball, Jim Abbott. Um, he had one hand, was a pitcher, somehow managed to pitch a no-hitter, somehow managed to make it in the MLB, overcome right. ama- great adversity. Oh, yeah. Not having a hand and being able to pitch in the MLB is uh, – that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, a couple other ones for baseball, Duke Snyder uh, helped. Dodgers win the World Series in 1955. <laughs> 59, yeah, not that good. Um, Joe Morgan, also a Hall of Famer, uh, helped, uh, was part of the big red machine, the Reds in the 70s, uh, win those two World Series. But yeah. Uh, it's Jimmy Fallon's birthday. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. I know I, not, there's an some, a, not an athlete. There's Is some, he con- there's, he's not, I mean, I'm sure he's I'm in sure pretty he's good shape. Athletic. He's got to be in good shape. You know, I don't know. I think he's kind of on the hot seat right now. There's 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 some stuff in the media going around, but uh, wait, ha- whoa. oh, just like toxic work environment stuff. Same stuff that happened with Ellen. Just it's all same same stuff that's going on at uh, <laughs> Cougar on the Clock. <laughs> Hostile takeover. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, yeah. I think that pretty much wraps it all up. For it today, does. Right. It does. So uh, awesome. Check out our. Socials at Wazoo Sports Network on Instagram, TikTok, Wazoo Sports Net on Twitter. For more videos like this, go on to Table 8, like, and subscribe. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm your host, Alex Dorfler. I'm Mati Tenney. Yeah, have a good day. Go Cougs. Go Cougs.